Hello everyone, today we're going to practice some of the uh, topics that we discussed uh, on phasers. So we're going to consider this relatively simple circuit where uh, we're dealing with uh, three electrical components and the source happens to be given in this uh, phaser format as 40 with the phase of minus 90 degrees. Now. Let's uh, first make sure that we are all on the same page in terms of what this means. So, as uh, we discussed, you can actually rewrite this uh, into, first of all, the complex equivalent of uh, the phaser, which basically is 40E to the minus the 90 degrees J or minus pi over 2J. Or you can write it in the time domain in the form of 40 cosine of omega t plus the phase, which is minus pi over 2 in this case. So all these three different uh, representations mean the same thing. In the time domain, this is actually the uh, the the, the uh, source if you want to draw it this is what you need to draw uh, you give t different values and keep drawing this assuming that you know what the uh, omega is the basically the angular frequency and uh, it, whenever you want to do math this is the representation that usually is the most useful uh, the complex domain representation and by the way using the Euler equation we know that uh, e to the theta j is cosine of theta plus j times sine of theta now knowing that cosine of minus pi over 2 is 0 uh, and sine of minus pi over 2 is minus 1 and this all turns into a minus 40j and this is basically uh, the number the complex number that we're going to use whenever we start doing uh, calculations for circuit analysis the frequent the angular frequency uh, in this question is given as uh, 50 times 10 to the 3 so with that we can start uh, transforming the circuit into the phasor domain in which we're going to do all the analysis and math basically since we know in that domain uh, there all the equations for the components are going to be linear basically universal own laws and therefore there wouldn't be any differential equations to do um, so let's do that um, with the source we're going to have the same uh, symbol I'm going to use boxes for all the rest of the components to just uh, notify ourselves remind ourselves that this we are no longer in the time domain and also this uh, reminds us that they pretty much behave the same, all of these components in this new domain. Now, to calculate values, uh, we know that we have to use the impedance equations. Now, uh, the impedance equivalent of a resistance is the same as the resistance. The impedance equivalent of the inductor is the inductance times the uh, angular frequency times j and the impedance equivalence of a capacitor is 1 over and the capacitance uh, angular frequency j and you can basically rewrite the same equation by multiplying both, both uh, numerator and denominator by j and that's going to give you minus j over c omega so let's calculate that for all the components in the circuit uh, for the resistance, obviously, we still have the 30 ohm. For the inductance, uh, we have 1.2 uh, 
10 to the minus 3 times 50 10 to the 3 j which is basically 60 j and finally with the uh, capacitance you're going to have minus j over the capacitor is 10 to the minus 6 times 50 times 10 to the 3 so the whole thing becomes 50 10 to the minus 3 which is 1000 divided by 50 which is 20 so minus 20 j is the equivalent impedance of the capacitor we're going to write those right here so this is minus 20 j this is 30 and 60 j so with that and let's do the source as well which is minus 40 j Let's start doing the circuit analysis now. So once you're, you're done transforming your circuit into the phasor domain, the algorithm is exactly the same as what it was before. We're going to label the nodes. Label the currents. So first nodes, this is, I'm gonna assume that's my ground. So this becomes minus 40 J and this one I'm gonna call V it's capital V with a line here to remind us this is a phaser I'm just gonna leave it as what it is so just beware that this is a phaser this is, a, this is basically a um, complex number then for the currents I S this is I S I'm gonna call that I1 and finally this one I2 with that our labeling is done we're going to move on to uh, writing the equations okay so let's start doing the math we have to write KCL for the node V and that is IS the current going in is equal to I1 plus I2 currents leaving that node. Equations for components. Uh, for all three components, the equation is going to have the same format. For the capacitance, IS is equal to minus 40J minus V divided by minus 20J. For the resistance, I1 is equal to v minus 0 divided by 30 and finally, finally for the inductance i2 is equal to v minus 0 divided by 60 j so as you can see these are all linear equations and uh, however you were doing your linear equation set of equations before you can do them now uh, if you're using your calculator or you're using the matrices um, you can just do the same just keep in mind that uh, now all the calculations are in the complex domain I'm going to do it with hand so uh, we're going to take all the current equations put it in the KCL that's going to result in one equation and one unknown so minus 40 J minus V divided by minus 20 J is equal to V divided by 30 plus V divided by 60 J so now I'm going to multiply both sides by 60 J and this one actually I can both multiply the top and the bottom by plus one and get rid of the negatives so that would be 120 J plus 3v is equal to 2vj plus v. So I'm going to move all the voltages to one side. So 2, so v times 
2j minus 2 is actually equal to 120j. And from that, the voltage is equal to 120j divided by 2j minus 2. I can simplify that and turn it into the typical universal complex number format of real plus imaginary times j. So divide both top and the bottom by 2, that would be 60j divided by minus 1 plus j, and then multiply both top and the bottom by conjugate at the bottom, so 60j times minus 1 minus j divided by minus 1 plus j times minus 1 minus j. So that is 60j um, and then 60. So 60 minus 60j divided by minus 1 to the power of 2 plus 1 to the 1 which is just 2 and that's going to give me 30 minus 30j. Now I can take this and turn it into the um, time domain. So vt is equal to amplitude of this number which is the square root of 30 to the power of 2 which is 900 plus another 30 to the power of 2 so that's 1800 cosine of omega 50 10 to the 3 t plus tangent inverse of imaginary which is minus 30 over 30 so okay so that's equal to 30 square root of 2 cosine of 50,000 t and for the angle you have to quickly realize where this vector complex number vector is so if this is 30 and then minus 30 so the vector 30 minus 30 j is in the fourth quarter so the angle is a negative number so you have to realize that because when the tangent of an angle is minus 1 the angle could be both minus 45 degrees or plus 135 degrees so this on the other hand this angle is this is going to have the same tangent and you have to know where the vector is in order to pick the correct angle which in this case is actually minus 45 degrees okay so with that uh, our uh, solution is concluded at this point I'm going to just write this value the voltage up here 30 minus 30 J uh, remove all this and redo the problem the, using a shortcut uh, that we used to use when we were doing everything in time domain this is to just show you you can do whatever that you were doing in the time domain here in the complex domain and that was uh, the technique I'm referring to is was called the voltage divider so if you recall you could uh, use equivalency resistance equivalency uh, now we can do impedance equivalency to turn these two impedances into one impedance and then the equivalent circuit basically becomes something like this where this is now the equivalent of that resistance and the inductor in parallel to each other and this is the capacitance now the voltage that we're looking for is basically a voltage divider between these two impedances multiplied by this voltage of minus 40 J so uh, V naught let's call it this time so this V naught is equal to Z equivalent over Z equivalent plus ZC times minus 40 J 
So let's do that and see that this is going to result in the same thing. Let's first calculate Z equivalent. So Z equivalent is uh, 30 in parallel with 60J. That's basically 30 times 60J over 30 plus 60J. So you can divide both top and the bottom by 30 at this point. That becomes 60J divided by 1 plus 2J. And then multiply both top and the bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. So 60J times 1 minus 2J over 1 minus 4J to the power of 2, which is 4, so that would be 1 plus 4, that's 5. And therefore this turns into 12J times 1 minus 2J, that would be 24 plus 12J. Now let's put this in this equation. So V naught is equal to 24 plus 12J over 24 plus 12J minus 20J, which gives you 24 minus 8J. Uh, and all of that multiplied by 40J. So we can simplify this, dividing both top and the bottom by 4 is going to give you 6 plus 3j over 6 minus 2j times minus 40j. Then again, multiply both top and the bottom by conjugate of the denominator. That's 6 plus 3j times 6 plus 2j over 6 to the power of 2 plus 2 to the power of 2 which is 40 so that's actually 40 times minus 40j to 40 is simply go away And from this, that's 36 so 36 plus 12 j plus 18 j minus 6 times j this whole thing times minus j so that's uh, 30 j minus j that's 30 and uh, minus 30j there we go so you can see that the voltage actually turned out to be the same thing as what we calculated before now whether or not you call this shorter I think if you have a calculator and you can actually do these in, a, in your calculator just simply punching the, um, the complex numbers and calculate this equation this shortcut equation this would be faster even since I did that with hand maybe it turned out to be slightly uh, long but uh, hopefully this has been helpful uh, thank you for your attention and uh, bye